Have you tried playing a new game and you're kind of not sure where to start? Or have you got your favorite board games and you wish you knew some of the other strategies to play them? Well, in this video, I'll put together some tips strategy from board game designers and publishers themselves coming up. I hope you're well, it's Stella from Info University. Welcome to my Tabletop Diary. Hopefully you've seen the other tips video that I've done and find them useful. Otherwise, check them out here or check the descriptions in this video. Before I get into it, please write in the comment sections below what you think of these episodes and if there are games you want to be featured in this strategy series. If we have videos for our games featured here, I will Put the links in the descriptions below also so you can look at our review or how to play or play videos. So here are the tips, starting with terraforming Mars and most of its expansions by the designer Jacob. Hi, I'm here with Jacob Fruxelius. How are you today? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Of Terraforming Mars. So you are the main designers or you the designers of Terraforming Mars? Yeah, yeah. I am. Jacob. Yep, and uh, Jacob, now we've got some requests from our viewers for some tips and strategy, basic beginners and advanced strategy for terraforming mass. So can you please share us, you know, how to win the games or also tips for beginners perhaps? Well, uh, for beginners, uh, I think the first thing is to just learn the game and uh, just uh, discover all the different synergies because one of the main things is to utilize the cards you get and to adapt to the situation. That's on a more advanced level, but you have, you have to start thinking about your opportunities. Uh, then when you get to know the game a little bit more, you need to also realize that uh, you can get a lot of points from uh, the ground game. Having just one city can give you quite a lot of points. So that's something you should strive for, having at least one, probably more. But it depends on, uh, on your other circumstances. You should also try to get at least one milestone or award, because that's a lot of cheap points. Uh, so don't get too far behind on that, I, I, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so those are the um, beginning ones. Uh, but uh, for more advanced players, I, al I uh, often hear that um, people are buying too few cards, actually, because they only want to buy the cards that they can uh, more or less immediately use. Oh, really? Yeah, and I think that is a mistake for uh, experienced players, actually. Uh, so uh, for the advanced players, I would say, buy a little more card than you need. Buy some for the future, so you don't end the turn without cards in your hand. Because you need uh, cards for next uh, generation as well. Because in the beginning, you have access to a lot of cards, but not much economy. That's correct, not a lot of money. Yeah, but later in the game, you have a lot of economy and not enough cards. So you should actually spend some resources in the beginning of the game to have good cards to spend on later. And especially some of the cards that are late game can be really, really powerful. And That's if, right. And if they synergize with your, if you can create a strategy that aims for getting there sooner, they will be also be more powerful, which means that we, they will be very much worth uh, waiting for as well. Uh, so uh, sometimes people, if they buy too few cards, they end up with no cards, and then they are at the mercy of the draw. And if they get unlucky, they don't get the cards that they, that they can use. Uh, but that's their own fault. They think it's a lucky thing, but they set themselves up by not saving any useful cards. I understand. I often wonder whether I should spend the money. And there are cards that actually um, you can only play if Occident reach a certain point. Yeah. Do you, so do you buy that early or do you buy it late? It depends. Uh, if I have the means in my starting hand, for example, to increase the Oxygen, then I will buy it, yeah because then I can make the oxygen come uh, for it faster and then I can use it faster and then it will, it will be a valuable late game card. Um, so for example, if I'm Helion and have a lot of heat production, then I will take fishes for sure. Especially if I can also get uh, like plants or something like that that also requires uh, temperature. And then we'll just uh, pump the temperature uh, for, the, for the first half of the game. And, uh, and then I will get some really nice uh, cards going a little bit later. That's a really good strategy because yeah. that's like if, as I say to you yesterday, if somebody say your favorite game, let's say it's not fair. Oh, okay, we all know it's not a fair question if someone mm -hmm. asks us what's your favorite game. But if it's, I would immediately say terraforming Mars, 
and I've been getting all the expansion. Now, talking about expansion, because that also adds more things to the games, and I can see that there's my micro uh, cards coming out that's on the expansion, which means that maybe the strategy of collecting microbes be a little bit more, you know, easier, do you think, with the new card that's coming out? Uh, I think the terminal expansions uh, is, is supporting a lot of different strategies. Okay. Uh, so uh, you can, um, I would say it, uh, that every strategy becomes easier in some, in some way because there is always some party that will support your strategy, almost always. Um, so um, if you can use it to your advantage, I think uh, every strategy is actually strengthened by this expansion. Yeah. I like the Venus one where you collect the, uh, the floaters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is not actually in turmoil, the, the floating resource. I know, resource. yeah, that's the previous one. Yeah, but yeah. we have, do have the promo pack where we have the crossover uh, with turmoil and the innocent colonies, where you have oh. actually global events that uh, promotes floaters. It, and it is available now at Essen? Yeah, sure. It was included in It was included in the Kickstarter, uh, but we have it for sale here at Essen as well. Oh, okay, because I'm getting this Kickstarter anyway, so yeah. it'll be there yeah. with the double layered board. I ordered everything, like every single thing. <laughs> So, so all of those expansion, is there any particular strategy for certain expansion, the one that, uh, apart from the co colonies, we've got turmoil, or we've got colonies, we've got um, the Venus one, so is there any particular strategy when, uh, with each, each expansion? Um, generally no, but uh, a little bit yes, uh, but uh, for some more than others, for example, the uh, the, the prelude, it shortens down the game, so you will not have as many uh, generations, which means that engine building will be less important than uh, direct uh, direct points in terraforming. Colonies uh, makes uh, a very cheap trade with energy, so playing with that one makes it very important to reach three energy production quite early uh, to make efficient trades. You can do it without, but it's, it's better with it. And the, I would say that the Turmoil expansion, it also supports many different strategies, but it, it has quite a lot of uh, support for ground game, because you have two of the parties supporting and placing tiles in different ways. So uh, there is some shift, but not too, mu not too much. And with Venus, we discussed Venus earlier, yeah. Yeah, oh, it, yeah. It's, it doesn't really affect the ex existing strategies very much, because, well, it, it just adds the floater and the Venus strategies. Uh, and makes them viable, just as viable as any other strategy, really. Yeah, and I, I noticed that the other maps has got different achievement. That's really good. So you you can try different strategy. Oh, you have to try different strategy, obviously, instead mm. of like collecting the the cities or you collect other things as well now. Uh, yeah. Because you've got like three maps. Is yeah, it? the base game plus the Hellas yeah. and the Lysium map. Yeah. And that's different strategies as well for the maps, you reckon? Yeah. Don't forget to go for the milestones and awards. Those are the cheapest yes. points you can get in the yes, game. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jacob said that. Thank you. But, uh, but just um, a few games ago, I won the game ex completely without it. So you don't need to do it. It's really cheap points. You should go for it. Yeah, yeah. But you don't need to. If, you're, if you get really good synergy elsewhere, yep. there are other strategies you can go for. But you should try to get some. Yeah, because okay. it's really good. Yeah. Well, I can imagine you can play like... You're the most pro yeah. one that plays that without, wow, without milestones. Well, what did you do? Like, I'm, I'm now curious. What did you do without the milestone? What was your synergy? What was your strategy at the time? Do you remember? Um, not really, but if you can, uh, I mean, if you can get a really, if you get a really heavy engine going, it takes time to get it going. So maybe you're behind on, on the, the milestones and everyone else takes them before you. But if your engine is so good, then you can make up for it later with the ground game, for example. That's very good. And with the point cards, for example. I can see that now. Well, thank you so much for that. Do you want to shout out to anyone at all or for the anyone that backs and play your game, perhaps, in there? Um, Anything else you want like, to say? Or? Yeah, a shout out to Jorit, our faithful worker here at the fair. And um, happy gaming, everyone. Hey, thank you so much. Bye. Hi, I'm here with Uli from Spillworks. How are you today? I'm fine, although it's already the third day, so you know, it can be tiring. But they at Spill 2019. Now, I know that you've been re working really hard. I see you start your booth really early in the morning and then mm -hmm. staying up late and then make sure everyone's having fun and then demoing your game, which is, bring us to? 
Ronald, of, uh, Throne of Allegoria. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. Yeah. No, we're at the same time. So, Uli would like to share some tips about the games, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps the beginner strategy and also a more advanced strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, this game is available at Essen to, to be purchased, and after that, available everywhere. Yeah, at, at my website and from selected stores. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, let's get to the table. All right, so we have everything set up here on the table. And please tell us what tips we should employ when we play the game. Yeah, first of all, it's not a game about long-term strategy. The game has six game turns, but you cannot say in the first game turn already, I now do this next time and then do this this time. It's a game full of opportunities. You have to react to the other players, you have bidding tokens, so you need to see what is most important at a moment. We also have um, some merchant cards for the economy, and so if the economy is good in a game turn, we have to react to this, we have to adapt. But um, it's a game that has lots of different elements. It has this bidding aspect, but it's not an auction game because all this bidding translates into actions that are on a player aid table. So for various, for soldiers, for spies, for merchants, for bankers. And this is um, one of the goals. And it's also a very material, components rich game because each player has a town board with markers. There are various card decks for claims cards, for workforce cards, as I said, for the merchants and many more. So in each player, each game is different because you have a set of these roll cards. So the blue player here would be now the artist of house. Uh, I cannot see it from here. And Harris, I, I think. And of course, you also have your guild cards in your color. And it's an Anglo-German game, so we have cards with English language and with German language as well. So you, you decide which is, what language is most important for you. And you represent, the, the goal of the game is to become the successor of Queen Gwendolyn, who is unfortunately dying. We know this, and so we want to be the successor in this game. That's why we... In our small realm, we want to expand. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. Hopefully, you are interested in this game. Oh, definitely am. So, is there any things that I should watch out for when opponents? I like um, games where with high interaction, where you have to yeah. watch out. That means that you can't really think too much ahead and right. I'm not really that good at thinking too much ahead I think and then I might just like oh okay maybe I should do this one I'll do that one yeah so um, this is completely correct you have to adapt and let's say if somebody has this is a battlefield you're for the white player if he brings out a lot of soldiers you should probably if you are playing black over here you should bring out some soldiers as well because you know this may be just a threat, but maybe he's doing something to try to attack. But yeah, so you see, it's not a game where you are structured from start to beginning. You have to adapt, you have to react. Perfect. Thank you so much for that tip. So I'll definitely implode it when I play that game. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the tips and strategy. Thank you so much for that, Uli. I'm sure that it's very useful for you if you just started to play it or if you played a few times and would like different strategies. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope you liked it and yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Now for Spirit Island, the designer Eric has no time to film himself. So he has kindly gave me some written tips and strategies that I will read myself. So here they are. I try my best to pass on these tips to you for Spirit Island, starting with beginning tips in rough order from most important to least important, then the intermediate tips in no particular order. Beginning tips. Number one, focus most of invaders in lands showing under build and ravage. They're the ones that are going to do bad things soon. You can leave invaders in other lands alone for a little while. Number two, Prevent builds by emptying a land of invaders just after they explore there. 
This is incredibly valuable since it also handles that land ravaging on the following turn. It can be worth spectacularly playing slow powers that move or destroy explorers just for the chance they'll be able to do this. If you're not sure what to do with your turn, see if you can do this. Number three, defend against ravagers in the lands with Dahan. Partly because the Dahan are your neighbors and it's friendly to help keep them alive, but also because they're fantastic at counter-attacking. Number four, it's okay to take some blight. Trying to stop all the blight can trap you in a loop where you constantly reclaim to get particular power cards or where you never stop invaders from building because you're spreading all your efforts for ravages. In either case, you'll slowly lose ground over time and eventually be buried. Number five, concentrating invaders is usually good. It doesn't increase the amount of blight going down per ravage and it lets you use high damage major powers more effectively. Number six, when gaining power cards, prioritize ones that let you activate your innate powers or power. Most spirits get a lot of benefit from them. The same is true if you have a major power with a really good threshold effect. Number seven, fast powers offer more certainty, but slow powers do more for a given energy cost. Learning to use slow powers effectively can help a lot. You can do this either through careful anticipation of invader phase or by playing them speculatively and not figuring out what you do with them once you're actually in the slow phase. With note, powers with notable targeting restrictions are less good for playing speculatively. Number eight, don't hoard energy. If you're sitting on four or more energy before growth, it's probably time or past time to think about taking a major power. Having lots of banked energy does not help you to win. Spending energy on useful power cuts does. Number nine, limit how many lands are high priority to defend. You are not sure where to put your presence. Look for a land that has lots of new adjacencies for you as well as Dahan or N or Blight. New adjacencies give you more targeting options for your powers. Dahan and or or Blight being present means the land is already a higher priority for you to defend. Now for intermediate tips in no particular orders. Number 10, think about when not to use all your cards play. Usually unused plays are a waste, but sometimes a card isn't worth the energy it would cost to play. Sometimes holding back this turn will give you a better innate action next turn. Sometimes you want to stretch an extra turn before reclaiming, and one of your cards would have much higher utility next turn than this one. Number 11, of element minors mesh nicely with majors. Take minor power cards that help trigger your innate powers is a reasonable default. But sometimes you don't get that choice or the board position makes some other power a better bet. The more of these of your useful elements powers you have, the better taking majors becomes. You both have more powers you can forget without impacting your innates and a wider array of elements that might match a major powers threshold. Number 12, safe zones are great if you can make opportunity for one. Safe zones or Clear zones or back courts are areas where invaders fail to explore due to a lack of adjacent towns or cities or ocean. They are a real pain to set up, but the payoff is very, very good. It can be worth letting another portion of the island slide in order to make one, though always keep an eye on how bad blight cascades you could get. Last but not least, number 13, leave room for beneficial surprises. Well, you can't rely on fee cards to do anything specific for you. If you have to do three N fee cards at Terra level two or higher, they're very likely to help your board position to some degree. If you leave room for beneficial surprises by focusing less on defense in strategically chosen lands, where you can afford to take hit if no surprises come through, you'll have more energy in place to use for other things. This is mostly a mid to end game strategy. In early game, you're not earning as many fee cards and terror level one effects are weaker. Keep in mind that fee and events cards are more likely to help you in lands with Dahan and or or presence. Although these are also the lands where the consequences of an unchecked ravage are higher. So 
thanks guys for the tips well hopefully these tips are useful if you discover tips for these board games yourself please feel free to write in the comment sections below if you like and watch out for our next episode if you enjoyed the video please help us by hitting the like button and subscribe to us you can also click the meeple in the corner and hit the bell so you'll be notified of our next videos including the next in the board game strategy series check me out on instagram for my board game journeys and i will see you next time thank you for watching have a good day yeah sorry your dad oh your dad's in the scene so we'll just move move this way a little bit do you go there get the call now papa you feel my heart that's okay, I can just edit that. Someone moving? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. I can just edit that, that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> that's all right. Let me pop up. Yeah, I know. Daddy. I know. Yeah. You look uh, similar, you and Anna. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Well, I'm, no, I can see the resemblance. Terraforming Mars and most of its expansion by the Dasana 